Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Well, today we're going to continue work on the big helix project. And specifically, we're going to start laying track here on the roadbed that I now have completed. So let's go ahead and get started. Hit that little red uh, subscribe button. And when the little bell comes up, click on it and click all. Thanks now. One of the things that I want to start with is to go back and talk about when you're putting in the risers to get your road bed to the proper elevation, do not immediately glue it down because the Type Bond 3 and other type of modern PVA adhesives like I was using for this, um, they are very, very aggressive. And once you put the glue on and it's set up for 24 hours, you're not going to be able to get that off easily. Matter of fact, in most demonstrations that I've seen where people tried to take a glue bond apart, they actually ended up pulling the wood apart. The glue bond is not going to break. So, one of the things that I really advise is get yourself some of these uh, quick grip clamps or some other type of clamp and clamp your risers to the cross members first. Then get them adjusted to the proper height all the way around on that first level. And once you've got them all installed and to the height that you've calculated for your layout, for your helix, then take your cell phone or your digital level or whatever device you have for measuring the angle of uh, your road bed and check it out all the way around. And I ended up doing that about three times before I was completely satisfied. And then once you've got everything leveled out at just the right level and you've got that slope uh, the way you want it, then go ahead, do your gluing and your screwing and get everything stabilized permanently. Because like I say, once you glue this sucker together, it's not coming apart again. Now another thing to be aware of with this uh, app that uh, is available for cell phones, uh, and there are different versions of this available that you can download. One thing I found is that it is very, very sensitive. And uh, as you move around your uh, Helix uh, baseboard, Check the level on a regular basis, like right now it's reading a little bit high on this end. And then over here, uh, it's reading dead level. Back here, it's pretty close to level there. And over here, um, it's pretty close to level. But one of the things you can do on the display here, on your little uh, cell phone uh, app, there is a reset button. So you can set it down and hit the reset button and that will zero it out to that particular level. It's going to be calibrated to how level this section is here. One of the things that can affect that are those screw down uh, feet that I use on my uh, legs here. Because when you move this thing around, they will turn on you and that will change the height of the legs. So I periodically found out that I had to go back and check how level everything was and adjust the height of the uh, legs once again to get everything back in level. But like I said, one thing you can do is just uh, set, it, uh, set your uh, cell phone down here, hit the little reset button, and that will set it down to zero. That will zero it out. And then your measurements will be dead on accurate again. Another thing I wanted to point out, I've added the uh, corner braces on each leg and those give me a rock steady foundation because once I start adding all of these loops, uh, this plywood is really going to start to add up and it's going to get heavy fast. So I wanted to make sure I had these braces in place to stabilize those legs because anytime you move this thing around, they were kind of wiggling a bit, but I wasn't concerned. Uh, until I started adding the uh, extra weight of the uh, road bed itself. So you can see this thing is rock stable now. It will not wiggle at all. Somebody asked me about where I got this little device for measuring the length of run here on the layout. Well, this is an old map maker's tool. It was made in Switzerland probably 50 years ago. Uh, you can find these uh, available on the internet 
probably eBay, places like that. They were made in Switzerland by a company called Lights. And um, I'm not sure it's a, a line measurement tool. As far as other options available today, Micromark sells a digital version of this. It sells for around $28, I believe, something like this. Um, I found, by the way, I did find one of these available online for, I think, $25. So these are, like I said, still available uh, if you find them on eBay, places like that. Uh, the other thing that I found that was much, much cheaper is a device called a Curve Runner. And it looks very similar to this. However, it has a limit of about 12 inches. So as you make a measurement, you have to keep track of how many times the wheel turns. But it's, like I said, it's much, much cheaper. It's available on Amazon, places like that. Just do an online search for Curve Runner and it will come up. And I believe this will come up at the same time. And check out the one at Micromark. It's a little bit more expensive, but it does a lot more than just measure curves. So it does offer some additional features for the extra bucks. Okay, for the Helix, I'm going to be using FlexTrack because it's a lot easier to deal with FlexTrack than with SetTrack. And I think you're going to have a hard time finding curved SetTrack with anything more than about a 18 or a 22 inch radius. So if you're doing something as big as this, you're going to have to use flex strike. It's your only option. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here is set this out right on my line. And let me point out, I'm not going to be using any glue and I'm not going to be using cork road bed. The track is going to be laid directly on the plywood road bed itself. Um, and how am I going to do that? Well, in his article in Model Railroader back in uh, 2008, uh, Jeff Johnson suggested using these wood screws and washers to hold everything in place. Now, what you do is basically just take a number four wood screw and put it in a number eight washer, and it will fit right in there. And the great thing about that is you can just put that right in here, take your screwdriver, and screw that sucker in, and that's it. No gluing, nothing. All you have to do is screw that in with that washer in place, and it's going to hold your ties firmly in there. It's going to hold your track, everything is going to be stable without any glue or anything. And because you're not using anything like cork, you don't have to worry about screwing it down too tight. So I wouldn't recommend this method if you're going to be using cork or any other kind of uh, soft material as your road bed or sub road bed. You just continue doing that all the way around here. Let me get some more of these. So I'm going to put about four of these for every three foot section of flex track. So let's see, we'll come out to about here and put one in. And one of the great things about this is if you don't get it perfect, you can just loosen it, nudge it to the side, and then screw it down tight again. Very easy to make those fine adjustments as you go along. And here's a real tight close-up of one of those screws and the washer in place. So you can see it, uh, it fits in there real tight, gives you a good centering mechanism, and holds those ties down firmly uh, against the plywood road bed. So it's not going to be moving around. And uh, I found it to be very steady once it's all in there, because once you've got several of, the, of these, then the actual flex track does not move around. And it seems to be a fairly stable method for installing track in locations like this where you're not concerned about the noise uh, and the fact that the screws and the washers are going to be exposed and visible because this is going to be out of sight underneath of the layout itself. And these are the two products that I'm using here. Uh, we have the number four by one half inch wood screw and then we have the number eight washers. I got these at Lowe's. They're made by a company called Hillman, 
and they make a lot of these type of uh, fasteners and products like this. So they're very easy to find at a lot of different hardware stores. Okay, let's go up here and we'll do one here. Okay, got it started. And there we are. Okay, so right like that, we've got the first half stabilized. Now I'm not going to stabilize this section out here yet because I'm going to be adding another section. So I want to move in here, bring the camera in closer, and we'll go ahead and I'll show you how I'm going to attach these two pieces of flex track together before we stabilize them. Okay, so I've got my piece of flex track laid out right here. And uh, I've left a nice straight section, as you can see. And uh, it's a good idea to do it this way because it's very difficult to try to join two pieces of flex track together once they've been curved. And it's very easy to end up with kinks and all kinds of problems. So what you want to do is start out with two relatively straight sections like this that you can join together and then bend them to the final shape. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and cut this one off so that it is level or even with both sides here. Like that. And then we will file the undersides and file the web of the rail here. Just a little bit to Make sure it's going to fit together nice. Okay, then I'm going to take my two uh, rail joiners here and I'm going to slide them in place. Okay, like this. And make a joint right here. Just connect the two rail joiners to the other. Piece of track. Okay. Now, let me just take this and we can slide these guys hopefully into place like that. And we've got a good straight run here. Now, let me get my soldering iron. Oh, let me, um, let me apply just a tad of my paste flux to the uh, outside here. There we go. Okay. And now we'll go ahead and apply some solder. Just like I've done before. Okay, there's one. Okay, so we'll let that cool off and then when we're done, we can go ahead bend it to final shape, and then move on. Okay, so now that the uh, joint has cooled, that should be stable. So I'm going to start bending it to its final shape here. And we're going to start back here where we want this to go. And we need to be able to move these ties as needed. Okay. So I can now slide these ties a little bit forward and that will help it retain its shape as I bend it to the final configuration. There. And that's where having this line, the center line on the track, is very, very helpful in doing this. 
Okay, and then we can just start bending this whole piece of flex track here on around to the final configuration we want. And the two pieces of rail are going to slide as I bend this to shape. Okay. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and stabilize it with another screw. Okay, there's one. And we'll put one We'll put another one right here at the joint. Okay, let's check this one more time before we pin it down. And there it goes. Okay, so we've got a good sweeping curve here. And notice there's no kinks at all in that curve. And then I'm just going to take this ruler and you can see that we've got no problems clearing the head of that screw in that washer here. It's not an issue at all. So that's going to hold it firmly in place. Everything, nothing's going to move. Now, when I initially saw this method uh, in the uh, article back in 2008, I was a little bit skeptical because I had been one who had always used cork road bed underneath of my ties. And so the idea of laying my track directly on the plywood, that kind of ran against my grain. I had never done that before, never seen it done before. But, you know, I think it makes some good, re uh, there's some good reason for doing that. For one thing, it uh, reduces your overhead that you have to have by a bed, by the thickness of the cork. Um, it's a step that you don't have to do. You don't have to lay the cork, you don't have to glue it down, and you don't have to glue the track and the ties to the cork itself. So at some point in the future, I could take this whole thing apart and recover all of this track. Not that I think it will happen. Um, but there are some advantages. Uh, the obvious disadvantage is, of course, it's going to be louder. But you got to remember that trains going up and down the helix are going to be going slow. And that's one of the things that usually contributes a lot to the noise when your trains are running is the speed at which they go. And the faster they go, it seems like the more noise they make. So if you're going pretty slow up a helix, it should not be an issue as far as noise go. But the other thing is, uh, with a hidden helix and other pieces of hidden track, I think it's good that people can actually hear their train moving a bit because otherwise they get kind of anxious at not being able to tell whether their train is moving, whether it has stalled, or what is going on. So we'll go ahead and finish tacking down or screwing down this first section of flex track. Okay, let me go ahead and finish curving this to the finished shape that we want, following that uh, line that I put on the roadbed using the trammel, as I showed you previously. Okay, we got a gap here because of the ties, but since it's going to be hidden in the helix, I don't think I'm going to worry about it. So let me get another uh, screw and another washer and we'll go to putting that in place. So I think I'll put another one right about here. Okay, so that has the, uh, the first two pieces of flex track laid here on the helix. Now, what I want to do up here is this and this need to be cut to the same length. OK, 
Okay, and I'm going to trim this back just a hair. There we go. Okay, so I've got more flex track to lay. So we've got two pieces down. So I'm going to continue laying track here, making the connections and, and getting everything tightened. And then once we get all the way around to this point here, then we'll be adding the next level uh, to the helix. And that will come next week. Now, as I mentioned, uh, I like to have a little noise here on the helix in order for people to be able to hear their train actually moving and making progress up the helix itself. But in addition to that, I want to do something else. I want to have a display where they can more or less see the movement of their trains. And what that's going to entail is putting block occupancy detectors on some of these loops here so that as a train enters a section of rail on a couple of the loops, uh, a light or an LED on a display or a depiction of the helix will light up. So on the first and second loops, that'll be the first block. The third and the fourth, that will be the next block and the next LED that will light up. And then finally, the uh, last one and a half uh, sections of the uh, loop will be the uh, third detection block and we'll have an LED display for that as well. So I've got a lot of work ahead of me in the next week to get all of this track installed, and then we will start doing the actual roadbed installation to start moving up. So take it easy, have a great weekend, and come on back next week for another video from the DCC Guy. Bye now.